Hello my soccer universe. Well, the last day of the Nations League delivered quite some surprises, I would argue. Maybe there was not always high drama, but surprises were there for sure, especially in League B, where arguably every group almost had a flip around. Yes, England. Made it in the end quite cruisingly through, but everything else was rather, rather tight. It was also nail-biting stuff, especially if you're an Austrian fan. First off, you were nail-biting. Can Austria get it over the line? They didn't. And I have to argue with coach Rangnick so far. I have liked what he said, but after that game where Austria missed tons of chances and he waited until roughly the 80th minute to make changes, he said he cannot blame the team for anything. Well, how about finishing? And how about your tardiness in making changes when it was obvious that certain players look already tired? But hey, at least the second time I had edge of the seat stuff, this worked out in favor of Austria. Serbia did not beat Denmark and Croatia got the point, meaning Austria will be in pot one for World Cup qualifying. I will make a video on that draw probably when it is time for that. But that at least is good news because the chances for qualifying have increased significantly this way. But enough of Austria, let's talk about the other big upsets I would say. In Group B1, Ukraine are through to the playoff. They looked like they might get relegated and now they made a big turnaround with a win in Tirana. We had of course Norway going past Austria because Austria cannot get a result. We had then a similar result where Turkey had a very comfortable position and they lose and Wales get the win and Wales are through to League A. League C, not that much happening. However, then the huge one in League D. I think this is not only the best story but also the biggest upset. San Marino won a second game. They win a group. They're in League C. Unbelievable stuff. So this is just the tip of the iceberg. Let's recap the games over the past three days and then we'll talk about the playoff picture. It is without doubt the story of Monday evening. San Marino get a second win and for the first time in their history they score more than one goal. Heck, they score three goals in a 3-1 comeback win against Liechtenstein. Liechtenstein took the lead through a beautiful goal by Sele just before the half but right off the kickoff Lazzari gets an equalizer for San Marino. San Marino back in the game they needed the win to earn direct promotion to League C whereas a win for Liechtenstein would have given them a playoff spot. Then after corner kick there's a tussle in the ball. It's a penalty for San Marino and Nani scores the first ever second goal for San Marino off the penalty spot. He also got the equalizer at Gibraltar that kept San Marino alive. And then Golinucci adds a third in the 76th minute. I cannot tell you how happy this makes me. The worst team in the world got two wins in this Nations League window and they are now rewarded with a league C spot. They actually win a group. Bravo, 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 San Marino. I really think I should get a jersey of theirs. In Group D2, Andorra got their first point with a nil-nil on Malta. Surely helped that a Maltese player, Menz, was sent off in the 17th minute. There was no total upset in Group C4. Armenia salvaged their second spot thanks to a 2-1 win in Latvia and Northern Macedonia doing their job with a 1-0 over the Faroe Islands. However, that 2-1 was not that straightforward because Latvia actually tried. They knew if they beat Armenia, they actually have a shot of surviving in League C. Sperzian then gives Armenia the lead in the 48th minute, but then there were a few good chances for Latvia in there. And Uldrikis gives Latvia the equalizer after he had missed a pretty big chance early on, or better, it was saved by the goalie. But then just four minutes later, Miranian converts a rather crazy chance where Armenian shot twice hits the lower side of the crossbar then it seemingly cleared and he just from a short distance takes it off the defender puts it into the net. Armenia hold on and then they were hoping whether um, Northern Macedonia will do them a favor and they did so beating the Faroe Islands with a 60 second goal by Miofsky and finishing their Nations League campaign unbeaten and they will be in League B. The results in Group C2 more or less solidified the current standings meaning that the vertical of UEFA will not be a decisive one. Romania get a 4-1 win over Cyprus, never in doubt, although the Cyprus goal came out of nowhere and they had then a chance for equalizer. And then the Kosovo had an early 1-0 lead. However, goal scorer Yashari is sent off just before halftime and then Kosovo hold on with 10 men to that win. Lithuania desperately trying to get an equalizer, if not a winner, because that would have meant they would avoid direct relegation to League D. Meanwhile, with two draws, the current standings in Group C3 were also confirmed. Bulgaria 
very had a 1-0 lead at the halftime. However, they concede a 70th minute equalizer. I think that reflected the game quite well. In any case, a win wouldn't have been enough because Northern Ireland got a point in Luxembourg despite having a 2-0 lead, a comfortable 2-0 lead. And then within five minutes, they actually concede an equalizer. Two goals in there for either side where the goalie did not look all that well. Estonia confirmed a good Nations League form by only losing 1-0 to Slovakia. Kole Hein keeping them in play against the Slovakia team had actually quite some fun playing. Strelitz getting the winning goal after a nice attacking move. Meanwhile, with a 6-0 in Stockholm, Azerbaijan are directly relegated to League D. Viktor Jökeres got 4, Kulusevski got 2. Isak actually saw a penalty saved. Austria only managed a 1 1 at home against Slovenia, thus gifting Norway the win of Group B3, who themselves got a 5 0 win over Kazakhstan. Before I go into the disappointment of the Austria loss, I want to congratulate Norway for promotion to Nations League A. They deservedly got that win, Erling Haaland scoring a hat-trick. However, the man of the match was definitely Nusa, who assisted the first three goals, twice Haaland, once Serloth, and then scored a beautiful fifth one himself. However, Austria have only themselves to blame. They controlled Slovenia left and right. They had plenty of chances to start and then you thought Slovenia is actually keeping it tight on the back and you have to break down that wall and don't get caught on a Slovenian counter attack. But they thwarted one of those counter attacks in the 27th minute where then Baumgartner beautifully plays it on to Schmidt and it's 1-0 for Austria. And then there were other chances in there. I have to say Baumgartner, Sabitzer, there was a Rabona assist by Anatovic where he really should have already made it 2-0 before the half. Second half even more like that. On the flip side, yeah. Jan Oblak, especially in the second half, didn't have to do much more than catch a corner ball, which also tells you that we were not on target. And that's the biggest mistake. And what really annoyed me is that even when it's 1-0, it's, they wanted to carry the ball into goal, even wanted to score the perfect goal. And so you kept Slovenia hanging around, and Slovenia got a bit more in the game without being really dangerous. With their first real shot on goal, they score a similar goal that Austria scored. Patrick Pence, who was pressured by Sheshko, the ball is intercepted, and Kanichi puts it in and Cherin doesn't even hit it correctly but it's 1-1 one, one. and then late on Baumgarten has two chances one by an absolute great run of Patrick Wimmer was in the last minute of the game they cannot find the winner and so the bitter taste of disappointment is now all around Vienna this was a downer and those beautiful beautiful jerseys that they had issued for that game probably not as attractive anymore maybe in the first half, it was a rather tedious game for England against Ireland. And then in the second half, it needed a brilliant pass by Kane onto Bellingham that resulted in a penalty that also saw the scales sent off for a second yellow card. Kane converts in the 53rd minute and the floodgates open. Within five minutes of that goal, Anthony Gordon and Conor Gallagher score two more. And then Bellingham in the last 15 minutes assists two more goals by England through Jared Bowen and Harwood Bellis. Big win. Now Tuchel is going to take over. That means that Greece's 2-0 win in Finland did not account for much. However, they took the lead through Bakasetas just at that moment that the penalty for England was called. And then Zolis doubles up after a goal Jöran and clears the ball with his head. However, it falls to Zolis who, from quite a distance, puts it into the empty net. Greece finish a great Nations League campaign in second place. They still have a chance to qualify for Ligue 1 via the playoff. Well, Group B1 got settled much quicker than one would have expected. Yes, there was potentially late drama, but it was all pointing in only one direction very early on. In Ostrava, Schultz gave the Czechs a 1-0 lead already in the third minute. Beautifully played attack, I gotta say. And then Owen Tiran in the fifth minute sold Sinchenko, converts from the edge of the box to make it 1-0 for Ukraine and reminding everyone that the war in Ukraine already lasts for a thousand days. Very quickly thereafter then, Yaremchuk, after Konoplya assist, heads in, makes it 2-0 in the 10th minute. Ukraine looking like they have an unlikely escape. They were in last place before that. Suddenly they were in second place, looking good. Albania out. Then... Over in Ostrava, Lozek converts a free kick really well worked. The Czechs had a wall next to the Georgian wall, move it to the side as the free kick was taken and it goes straight into the net. The Czechs completely dominating Georgia there. Much of the same actually continued then into the second half. However, as soon as Mikodatze pulls one back, 
they have earned and some chances for Georgia. Georgia tried to hold their own and lay down there was a push to get an equalizer. It was a few times almost there. This would have given at least a bit of a security cushion against relegation, but in reality, the Czechs were the better team and deserved their win. Over in Tirana, a penalty was called then that Bayrami converts in the 73th minute. I'm still not sure whether this really was a penalty. However, Ukraine saw this out quite routinely, and so it's a pretty big win for the Ukrainians. They now are not getting relegated to League C, but rather have a playoff against a third place team from League a. a bit like Austria, Turkey failed to qualify directly for League A, having a very comfortable position going into the last match in Montenegro with a 2.3 goal cushion over Wales. And early on, the signs were actually pointing also towards Turkey because Good Jonsson, after an Oscarson shot, had been greatly parried gives Iceland the lead in Cardiff. However, then out of nowhere, Turkey had a few chances, but Kristovic counter-attack and in the 29th minute, it's 1-0 Montenegro. And a few minutes later, Kalm gives Wales an equalizer. So, game on. And that goal by Kristovic really shocked Turkey. They themselves then get an equalizer for Kenan Yield is also a little bit out of nowhere, but that moves them back in front. Just before the half, then it all fell apart for Turkey, more or less. First off, Kristovic with a great shot from the edge of the box that was not even shown live on TV gives Montenegro the lead again and then Calm with his second goal does the same for Wales second half just confirms what we saw at halftime Turkey desperately trying to go forward with so driving rain nothing will happen Kristovic got a third goal and Wales add two more to really make sure that goal difference will be in their favor Brennan Johnson Harry Wilson score two more in the end they could let it be because it was clear that Turkey are gonna lose and so Wales a little bit surprisingly win their group and move on to League A whereas Montenegro get their first win and Turkey have to now go into the playoff. With an uncharacteristic team performance, I would even argue, France go to the San Siro and get the necessary 3-1 win to win Group A2 ahead of Italy. And it was more or less the Digne Rabiot show because those two combined for all the goals. It started out early, second minute, it was a Digne corner that Rabiot had in and like in Paris, there was an early goal for France. However, this time around, it was France that kept on the front foot. And Italy actually were quite well contained by this French squad. They get the second goal through a Vidinia free kick that goes off the crossbar and then via Vicario into net. So it's technically a Vicario own goal. However, I still would give that one to Digne. Then quickly thereafter, Tonale Di Marco on the left side cross it in and it's Cambiaso who pulls one back for Italy, which would have been crucial if they could have held on to that because then Italy would have won that group. However, second half, it's again Digne and Rabiot off a corner kick combining and 3-1 for France. France hold on. There was a huge chance for Moise Ken late on, but France are the winners of Group A2. Italy now will have to face either Portugal, Germany or Spain, whereas France have a much easier route potentially to the semi-finals. As an Azzurri fan, of course, initially I was gutted, but then I reminded myself there are more Milan players on the French squad than there are on the Italian squad. Heck, there might be even more Milan-based players in the France squad, because also Marcus Thuram was playing for France. Motivation may not have been high, but Belgium suffered a very embarrassing 1-0 defeat to Israel in Budapest. The goal came late through Shua in the 86th minute. However, Israel also in the first have hit the post and you know if this goes in and that goes in then Israel only one goal away from actually beating Belgium and avoiding direct relegation. I think that coach Domenico Tedesco is in serious danger of being sacked. In one of the best games on Monday evening Scotland get a 2-1 win in Poland meaning they avoid direct relegation and they were quite close of actually reaching the quarterfinals. However, they did not get the two-goal cushion and also Portugal didn't give them the necessary help. But this was a really good game. McGinn already in the third minute gave Scotland the lead and then it was an up and down game where Poland also had pretty big chances. However, Scotland hit twice the woodwork in the first half. Second half, Piatkowski gives Poland the equalizer with a thunderous shot, but then it was all Scotland pressing, pressing, pressing and in steep in stoppage time. Andy Robertson via the inside of the post this time. The Woodwork worked in favor of Scotland, gives them the win, 
Poland are down, Scotland still have a chance. And Croatia secure a 1-1 draw against Portugal. It's a real hard game to judge for me because Portugal had quite some good chances in that one. Took the lead after a beautiful Vitinha pass was taken down by Joa Felic and with a second touch he puts it into the net. However, Kramaric also hits the post. Then Croatia do get their equalizer thanks to Guardiol who had already had a goal disallowed earlier on. It was a goal where I think the goalie of Portugal didn't look good because he was right there when Guardiol pulled it in. But then Portugal again have a pretty big chance to take the lead. However, late on also Budimir hits the post. I guess the draw was the correct result. In any case, Croatia scraped through to the quarterfinals. It was a festival of penalties and maiden goals in Tenerife as Spain beat Switzerland 3-2. Notable was the first penalty that was given to Spain after foul on Morata, where Pedri sees his effort saved and Nico Williams takes the first rebound. It's saved off the line, but then Jeremy Pino gets his goal for Spain. In the second half, Montero with his first goal for Switzerland equalizes. However, a few minutes later, it is Brian Hill with his first goal for Spain that re-establishes the lead. Switzerland thought they get the equalizer after a penalty was given to them that Sekiri converts. However, later on, Brian Zaragoza is brought down in the box. It's a penalty. He himself converts his first goal for Spain. Much less exciting but a whole lot more meaningful was the game between Serbia and Denmark and, and while this ended a nil-nil draw I was on the edge of my seat because I needed Serbia to not win so that Austria go into pot one for World Cup qualifying and boy this was a tight one because Serbia was majorly misfiring especially Vlahovic that many times that he hit over the bar when he could have well have saved it was really notable. The game started out with loads of Serbian attacks and quite some good saves for Schmeichel in there especially on meter and Vlahovic, those two never had me calm. But then there was also a great chance by Damsgaard that was cleared off the line. Then Paulsen had also a great chance that he just needs to place better. Was then an open game. Second half again, Serbia tried initially. Again, Vlahovic misfiring. Then Denmark actually got control of the game. And I always felt that if they can string together a few passes, they might actually get a win there. Was not meant to be. It ends in a nil-nil draw. But you know, in the end, Denmark saw it out with quite some routine and they move on to the quarterfinals. We had Bosnia claiming a 1-1 draw against the Netherlands at home. Robe gave the Dutch the lead and then Demirovic with a very smart head against the equalizer after Jekyll's shot had been parried. Over in Budapest, Hungary actually tried to put Germany on the back foot. However, Germany did get the first goal through Mecha in the 76th minute. Seems like Germany hang on. However, then a penalty is called and with the last kick of the game, Soboslai converts with a Panenka. So the groups are settled and in order to make the Nations League even more interesting, and I have to say this is a really good addition, and I said this when I talked about the new format, we now not only have a Final Four, we also have a quarter final in League A, but we also have playoffs. We have that the third place teams from the higher league play against second place teams from the lower league. So that adds a whole lot more jeopardy to everything. So in the quarterfinals, the seeded teams are of course the group winners, Portugal, France, Germany, Spain, and they will each play either Croatia, Italy, Netherlands, or Denmark. They cannot face a group opponent, which kind of makes sense. Seems to me just from the get-go that the seeded teams are just a tad above the remaining ones, but hey, Let's see if this will also turn out to be the case once the draw has been made. The promotion relegation playoff between Leagues A and B. The seeded teams, of course the League A teams, they will host the return leg. Scotland, Belgium, Hungary and Serbia. Whereas the teams that want to get into League A are Ukraine, Greece, Austria, Turkey. I think those will be quite competitive to be honest. Between Leagues B and League C, the seeded teams Georgia, Ireland, Slovenia and Iceland will face Slovakia, Kosovo, Bulgaria and Armenia. I would say with the exception of Slovakia and potentially Ireland, Iceland, it's all leaning more towards League B there as well. And then the playoff between League C and D, similar story. I would favor Luxembourg and Latvia, the seeded teams over Gibraltar and Malta. Well, we've seen that Gibraltar, they've already been in League C once. Maybe they can pull another upset. The draw for these players will actually happen on Friday. I'm planning to post a video right after that. You know, we'll probably come in the evening with a little bit of analysis of what's happening there. So this concludes the group stage of the 24-25 Nations League. I have to say there's so much negative talk around the Nations League. This is a great competition. It really is. 
and adding this player format makes it even more exciting. I actually would go so far as to use the Nations League as a qualification tool. What I absolutely love about it, and I'm repeating this, is that especially in the lower level, and just look at Group D1. We had the three smallest teams play in one group against the right. They finally have level opponents and are not getting beaten left and right. See what it did for San Marino. The San Marino players are walking with puffed chest at this moment. But I also think that League B is really an exciting league overall because the middle tier in Europe is very, very even. Yes, the top tier, I would say at least six, if not seven of the quarterfinalists are a tad above the rest of the European teams, but still upsets are always a possibility. So maybe League A is a little bit more skewed, but I think League B, really cool. League C, yeah, there's also a little bit of a difference in there, but I think with now the promotion and relegation playoff in such a way that there is a lot of interchange possible, I think this will even itself out rather quickly and there will be a much more level playing field. In any case, I'm looking forward to the playoff draw. I don't know who I want Austria to play. I think Austria doesn't need to fear anyone. However, they also need to be wary of anyone as well. But this will definitely be fun and I'll be following the Nations League. And hear me out, the Nations League should either replace the European Championship or be used for qualifying purposes as well. Not only by playoff, but really give the majority of spot through the Nations League, then this will add even more value to it. I guess I'm just ahead of my time there because I don't find hardly anyone that would agree with me on this point. Let me know your thoughts on the Nations League. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these and I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!